Hey, Cesar, how are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Well. What did you do today? Well, uh, I I was in exam uh, before the class. <laughs> in exam for the class? Uh, before the class. Ah, before, okay. Yeah, before the class, I, I was in exam. What exam did you have today, Cesar? Uh, it, uh, hydrogeology. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Do you think it's an easy subject or difficult? Very difficult. <laughs> For me, it's very difficult. A lot of mathematics. Not really, but it's, it's like um, a mix that geology and hydrology, but is uh, with less math, but the interpretation of the things is very important. So that is, is difficult, but I don't know, the, the teacher is, um, Checking the, the the grade is according the speed. I I guess that noise for the the learn really in the in the subject, right? So I don't know. I, I don't understood the 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 way that the teacher uh, take the grade, right? So it's because the exams are very difficult. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, the time is very short. So that is for that are very difficult exam. So I don't know. That, that's okay. my opinion, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Sometimes it's this is the idea, right? To to put pressure to work faster and faster. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Jose Isaias, how was your day? Hello, teacher. Uh, my day was very tired. Why, Jose? Because I work all day and then I have to make my dinner and then, well, uh, I read uh, some, some, to some page, some book of English. Okay. Uh, what books do you read, Jose? Uh, it's a book uh, called uh, Una Vida Sin Límites. Okay. In Spanish. Una Vida, una vida Sin Límites. Okay. What is it about? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's talking about uh, a man. Uh, he doesn't have his arms and his feet. And well, uh, he he tried to see the life uh, to the different to different uh, way because uh, all of us uh, well we we have our arms or feet and this and this guy uh, have to. Uh, work uh, all day with that uh, con esa carencia quería decir carencia with that handicap handicap okay mm -hmm. um well that's all okay okay good now if you see this is what we're going to do with our partners we're going to begin talking and asking follow-up questions like i asked jose and I like I asked Cesar. First, we describe the day. Then I ask for more information. I ask the questions: what, where, when, why, who. This is the idea to get the person to describe more. Okay, not to give answers for basic. No, to give bigger, longer answer with more description. This is the objective for the unit. Okay, to give bigger answers. Any questions? Okay, 
Remember, the question is depend your partner's answer. My partner says, I'm reading a book. I ask about the book. My partner says, I am doing an exam. I ask about the exam. No, uh, my partner says exam and I ask about the food. It's, it's not logical. Okay. All right. So let's go with our partners. And remember, describe and then the partners ask follow-up questions. Ask follow-up questions. Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example. I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. 
Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails nor I use my computer for send emails. Okay, let's see. Uh, Monica, what did you learn about your partners? Okay. Monica is quiet. Jose Isaias, what did you learn about your partners? Uh, okay, my partner is Stephanie Alejandra. And, and on Saturday and Sunday, well, we, uh, we start talking about Saturday. She, she's uh, she go to, to the church on Saturday and and she has to work on Sunday. Sí. Yes? No, he has to. Ah, she has she has to. Well, Saturday uh, she has to to go to the church and Sunday uh, she has to uh, she has to work. Um. Well, uh, she has a she is a student, and and that's all. Okay, no problem. Good job, Jose. What about Jose Carlos? Jose Carlos, what did you learn about your partners? I don't know, but your microphone, Jose Carlos. Hello, you can hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, we we uh, speak about uh, all people have a tired a tire day. <laughs> uh, we 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 was a uh, in the job <clears throat> in the day only that jose carlos yes okay all right so remember the idea is to try to get more details for example what job what what place uh, what do they do the different activities this is the idea because it's normal. What do you do? I work. This is normal. But what do you do? Where do you work? 
uh, where the places. This is the idea so that we can give more details. But so the next time, more. Good. And Maria Luz, tell us about your group. Mm, hello. My partner told me that she works um a store near of the beach and she works the the Monday to Friday weekends no um I don't remember more <laughs> okay Marielos who was your partner um I think she left the chat uh, I don't remember her name. So Monica was not your partner? Uh, no. no, I don't remember. No, I don't remember her name. Okay, okay, no problem. Hey, sometimes with the internet is bad connection in El Salvador, it's normal. Okay, today we have a good idea for asking questions. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about how to give the explanation, why, or for what. For this, we have gerunds and infinitives. So as an example, Cesar, do you have a phone? Yes. Okay. And what do you use the phone? Why do you have a phone? Well, I have a phone because it's very, I, I use a lot, right? Because for the university or for calls, and for games too, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Excellent, that is what we're going to learn, how to use for and to, not because, it's not necessary because, we can use because, for, or to, and the three have the similar meanings. Today we're going to learn a little bit what are those meanings. This is called gerunds in infinitives, in exercise 2.1. Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Okay, so what do we need here? We are looking at the idea that the meaning is the same, but we use them to express uses you use it to express purpose purpose is why why do you have it these are the idea for express purposes or reasons okay so what can we do no problem we explain why but no with because we use for or to remember if you use to is the verb normal okay so, Cesar, I asked, Cesar, why do you use the phone? Ah, in the number one, Cesar said, what was the number one? Ah, to call. That's correct. No, because, no, I use my cell phone. Why? To call my friends. 
or Cesar can say, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. The two forms are correct. We can use to call, sorry. Okay, we can use for call or we can use to call. The two forms would be correct. It's okay? Any questions? The meaning is, is the same in the in the both case, right? Correct. The meaning is the same. The meaning is exactly the same. So in this moment with our partners, we are going to do exercise 2.3 and we're going to explain why. Sorry, 2.2. 2.2. We're going to explain why we use satellites, why robots. Why cell phones? Why people? Why the internet? All of the different reasons. With our partner, we are going to read and select the best option. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Perfect. Hey, Monica. Hey, Miguel, very late today, huh?
Okay, Karen, tell me number one. Karen, number one. Uh, sorry, good evening, Mr. Edwin. Satellites are used to study the world's weather. Ah, oh, very good. To study the world's weather. Good. Only the pronunciation, Karen? Satellites. S excuse me? Satellites. Satellites. Good. That's good. Satellites. Okay. Mm -hmm. Satellite. Thanks. You're welcome. Cesar, number two. Okay, roads are sometimes used um, I don't, for performing dangerous tasks. That's the third one. Okay, good, Cesar. Only the pronunciation, used. Used, okay. Good, very good. Jose Carlos, number three. Uh, you can use a cell phone. Is a... Uh, Number two, to send text messenger. Good, only the pronunciation, messages. 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 Good. Jose Isaias, number four. Number four, people use the internet for making travel reservation. Good, all right, good. Ronnie, number five. Uh. DNA, figure printing is used to identify, identify criminal. Okay, good. Criminal. Okay, good, Ronnie. Only the pronunciation. And then used, and then used to identify, yeah. identify criminals. Criminals. Okay. And number six, Miguel Alfredo. Okay. Uh, for studying in this English encyclopedia, number three. Go ahead, Miguel, read the sentence. City room are used. Ah. Uh -huh, Miguel? Storing an encyclopedia. Okay, are you storing? Okay. Pretty good. Most of them are correct. Here, no used storing. Remember, if you use ing, we're going to use for. For storing. If we use to, we use the verb, normal. This is the most important. For ing, to the verb normal for ing and to the verb normal okay any questions no, no okay good now we're going to practice with our partners and we're going to ask our partners hey Jose Isaias, why do you use the laptop? Cesar, why do you use a telephone? And Ana Lisette, why do you use a car? And the partner, uh, the, uh, I use a laptop. The laptop is used for doing my homework. The laptop is used to do my homework. We are going to practice for, listen for your partner, for ing. Remember, for the verb ing or to and the verb normal, okay? So we ask our partners, why? Why the different situations? Why they use a laptop, cell phone? Why, a, why do you cook a pizza, okay? Or whatever, the idea is for anything that you want. We ready? Okay.
pronunciation. Syllable stress. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Satellite. Internet. Photograph. Invention. Assignment. Computer. CD-ROM. Engineer. Entertain. Where is the stress in these words? Can you pronounce them? Very good. Can you repeat with me? Languages. Telephone. Transmission. Robotics. Understand. VCR. Okay, any questions using four or two? Teacher, you you say, I, I use the backpack, but how do you say llevar? O sea, maybe. Llevar, you can use take. Ah, or take. Carry. Mm -hmm. oh, carry. Ah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No. Okay, great. So now we understand how to use four and two. The next activity is listening for pronunciation. Only listen how to pronounce the different words. Pronunciation. Syllable stress. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Satellite. Internet. Photograph. Invention. Assignment. Computer. CD-ROM. Engineer. Entertain. Where is the stress in these words? Can you pronounce them? Very good. Can you repeat with me? Languages, telephone, transmission, robotics, understand, VCR. Okay, only is to have the idea for the different pronunciations. But first, let's take a look. It's okay, all of the words? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about here? All of the words are okay? Yeah. Teacher. Yes? You can, uh, you can repeat the first word. Of course. Uh, but in the other. Right? Sure. Here we have. Yeah. Yes, no problem. Satellite. Satellite. Good. Satellite. Correct. Satellite. Then, mm -hmm. You're welcome. The other words are okay. The meaning of VCR. Ah, VCR is before the CD. Before the CD to watch movies. Yeah. You had the cassette. The cassette was VCR. Yes. Maybe you remember Blockbuster. Yeah. In El Salvador. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a one VCR in my house. Really? Yes. Ooh, it's <laughs> old, very old, very old. Yeah, yeah, very old. Very old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I use it. I use the, my VCR when I see the my 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 daughter mm -hmm. is, is a baby. 
Ah, for the videos. Yeah, she had, she had, yeah, she had uh, 23, oh, 23 años tiene. Decímelo, tell me in English, go ahead. 23 holes, no? Yes, remember, uh -huh. she is, she is she, 23 uh, she, years uh, old. Uh, she is 23 years old. Okay. When, when I see the VCR, she has uh, one, three, three, three holes. One year old. Yeah, one, one year old. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, the VCR is good. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to learn a next lesson. Here, eh, can you please read the objective, eh, Jose Isaias? Okay, teacher. Uh, in this session, you will practice a conversation about using a cell phone. See imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestion in context. Okay. Jose Isaias, why do you use a cell phone? Um, I use my cell phone to call my friends and to play video games. Excellent. This was the lesson from here, how to use the cell phone for four and two, okay, with gerund and infinitives. In this moment, we're going to learn how to use it with imperatives, okay? Imperatives is like for creating instructions or directions. So let's watch the video and learn. Hi again, listen to the audio program. Please pay attention because at the end of the conversation, I will ask you some questions. Get ready. Listen and practice. Can I borrow your phone to call my boss? I can't believe you still don't have a cell phone. Here you go. Thanks. Now, what do I need to do? First of all, be sure to turn it on. And don't forget to dial the area code. Okay. I can see the number, but I can't hear anything. That's because you haven't pressed the call button. Oh, good. It's ringing. Try not to get too excited. You'll probably get his voicemail. Hi, this is Joe Jones. You're right. It's a recording. Sorry, right Make sure now. to hit the end button, or else you'll leave our conversation on his voicemail. Ready? Who owns the phone? Who are they calling? What's the first thing to do? What should the woman press? If you're not sure about the answers, you may listen to the audio program as many times as you need to. Good luck. Okay. So, what is the idea of imperatives? Imperatives are all of the sentences with begin with verbs. For example, make sure, call, press, try, all of these words are imperatives, okay? Now here we use the, they are using the imperatives to talk about the cell phone and why to use a cell phone, right? To call and how do you make the call? Uh, press, leave, speak, different ideas. In this moment, we are not going to use the imperatives to describe the cell phone, okay? We're going to use the imperative to give instructions. So how do you, for example, how do you record a video? How do you take a picture? How do you make, leave a message? All of the different things with your partner. As an example, how do you take a picture? Okay, first you open the camera, then you go and, okay. And then all you have to do is give the instructions. So first you open the camera, then you select the photo, uh, Show, make sure to put the 4K video or whatever you like. And we're going to give instructions for different things. Maybe my partner, hey, I, I, Jose, I don't know. I, we have two Jose's. Jose Carlos, how do you turn on the computer? Ah, uh, Jose, give me the process to turn on the computer. It's okay. Okay, so in this moment, remember, Practice instructions, the process, how to do the different things.
Okay. Hello everyone! Before you watch the video, I want to remind you that imperatives are commands and they don't need a subject. Also, for giving suggestions, we will use an imperative as well as an infinitive. Stay around for more explanation. Imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. Be sure to turn it on. Don't forget to dial the area code. Make sure to hit the end button. Remember to pay the bill every month. Try not to talk for too long. This is how we use imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. When using an imperative, the subject is never mentioned and they always begin with a verb. And as said on the previous explanation, the infinitive is to plus a verb. Now let's think about a situation. These two kids are new to their English class and they say, we don't understand English. So let's give them a suggestion. We can say, study your verbs. But this sounds more like an instruction. So to make it a bit more polite and to actually sound like a suggestion, we may add, make sure to study your verbs. Check at the beginning we have no subject and then a verb, which means it's an imperative. Make sure. Moving forward to our infinitive to study. So when we put an imperative with an infinitive together, we can come up with a great suggestion. We will leave you now with some common expressions we use as imperatives to give suggestions. Be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember, try. Let's make examples using these expressions. Be sure to practice with your friends. Make sure to use a dictionary. Don't forget to think in English. Remember to do your English homework. Try to pronounce properly. Now read these suggestions. Be sure to speak in your native language. Make sure to forget your dictionary. Don't forget to stay quiet in class. Remember to translate into your native language. Try to mispronounce the words. You will agree with me that they are not good suggestions to give an English student. Therefore, we need to add the word not to make them positive suggestions. So the word not will go between the imperative and the infinitive. Now it is your turn. Ready to come up with examples of your own? Try it and write them on our discussion box. Hello everyone.
Okay, good. Any questions using the imperatives? No, teacher. About that, anything, teacher, but yeah. how, how do you say that the moving, when you tirar una pelota hacia arriba y hacia abajo, o sea, estirarla? No sé. Tirarla. Es throw. Como rebotar. Throw. Like, throw. Ajá, uh -huh, tirar es throw. Yeah, throw. Ok, but... Uh, touch. Uh, touch. 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 So, touch. Eh, pero ¿cómo, ¿cómo le dice esa acción de estar tirando y cachando? O sea, Exacto. Throw and catch. Ajá, uh -huh, throw and catch. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Also, you can say toss. Toss. Uh -huh. It's like toss, but not toss. It's toss. <laughs> How do you say toss? Toss. Uh -huh. It's cough. It's cough. Uh -huh. Cough. Toss. Yes, this one is okay. toss. Mm -hmm. And the action, the the ball. Correct. Is the action that when you throw the ball is a little different because throw is like in the baseball. Yeah, yeah. And toss is like this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Now we have the idea for imperative. We now we're going to see how to make negative imperatives, positive imperatives, and how to be polite with the different instructions because nobody is not good in the office clean the room. Hey, hey, a mí no me hables así. No, no, no. Is we want to we want to go in different ways. Positive, negative and polite. So in the video, watch and learn the different ways to use the imperatives. One, before you watch the video, I want to remind you that imperatives are commands and they don't need a subject. Also, for giving suggestions, we will use an imperative as well as an infinitive. Stay around for more explanation. Imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. Be sure to turn it on. Don't forget to dial the area code. Make sure to hit the end button. Remember to pay the bill every month. Try not to talk for too long. This is how we we'll use imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. When using an imperative, the subject is never mentioned and they always begin with a verb. And as I said on the previous explanation, the This is important because here you see no subject. No he, she, you, we, they, no. No subject. Only begin with your activity and they always begin with a verb. And as said on the previous explanation, the infinitive is to plus a verb. Now let's think about a situation. These two kids are new to their English class and they say, we don't understand English. So let's give them a suggestion. We can say, study your verbs. But this sounds more like an instruction. So to make it a bit more polite and to actually sound like a suggestion, we may add, make sure to study your verbs. Check at the beginning we have no subject and then a verb, which means it's an imperative. Make sure. Moving forward to our infinitive to study. So when we put an imperative with an infinitive together, we can come up with a great suggestion. We will leave you now with some common expressions we use as imperatives. Here are many common expressions to be polite. So no uh, turn on, turn off, cook, try, clean, no. Be sure to turn on. Make sure to clean. Don't forget. To, this is the idea to be polite. Okay. So to be direct. Hey, Carlos, turn off the computer. To be polite, make sure to turn off the computer. It's okay the difference? But what is the meaning in this case of the be sure and make sure? Uh, is to, to be certain. To be clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's to give suggestions. Be sure. Make sure. Don't forget. Remember. Try. Let's make examples using these expressions. Be sure to practice with your friends. 
make sure to use a dictionary. Don't forget to say. You see, these are polite. If you want to be direct, hey, practice with your friends. Use a dictionary. Think in English. But if you want to be nice, is be sure to. Make sure to. Don't forget. Okay? Think in English. Remember to do your English homework. Try to pronounce properly. Now read these suggestions. Be sure to speak in your native language. Make sure to forget your dictionary. Don't forget to stay quiet in class. Remember to translate into your native language. Try to mispronounce the words. You will agree with me that they are not good suggestions to give an English student. Therefore, we need to add the word not to make them positive suggestions. So the word not will go between the imperative and the infinitive. Now it is your turn. Ready to come up with examples of your own? Try it and write them on our discussion box. Hello. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to give suggestions using these expressions. How can you improve your English? For example, my partner, I want to improve my English. What can I do? Let's try the different examples. How can I be, how can I improve my English? Uh, don't forget uh, to uh, participate in class. Excellent example, very good. Another example. Mm -hmm. Make sure to practice every day. Good, okay. Go ahead, another one. Uh, try to repeat a lot. Good, try to repeat a lot. Mm -hmm. Remember to make your lunch to, by, by tomorrow. Okay, the sentence is correct, but how do I improve English? I want a better English. How do I improve? Try to learn a new verb. Exactly. This is the idea. This is the, the tips. Remember, hey, Isaías, hey, Marielos, Monica, how do I have a promotion? How do I get more money? Ah, this. These are the recommendations, suggestions, opinions. This is how to use it. Mm -hmm. So we can think about it. Think about it like this. Ah, I want to have a free day. I don't want to go to work tomorrow. I, what do I tell my boss? Ah, be sure to explain why you don't want to go. Uh, remember to tell him. Uh, that you are sick, the different. It's okay? Yes. Okay. Now, imagine you are the rock. You are Dwayne Johnson. You are Dwayne Johnson. I want to be like you. I want to be like you, Dwayne Johnson. What can I do? Well, I don't know, but uh, make sure to to be exercise uh, all day. <laughs> make sure to to do exercise. To do exercise, yeah. Correct. That's it. Just like that. That's yeah. that's when we use it for all of the situations when you want to give or ask for information. Mm -hmm. I say. Monica, you are working. <gasps> oh my God, Monica. Okay. How can Monica give opinion to Monica to leave work early? What can Monica do to leave work early? Remember the expressions. What is weak? 
She so, don't forget to work. Uh huh. So remember, no, she don't forget. Remember, don't no forget person to work. with with these no person only don't forget to work. Okay. Mm -hmm. The same when you are talking to Monica. Ah, try to organize your time. For example, okay. All right. Tomorrow we are going to continue practicing, giving instructions, giving the process. So tomorrow we are going to ask different situations, how to get in shape, how to learn programming, how to do the different things. And you need to give the instructions, the process. Okay? Okay. Okay, good, good. All right, guys, thank you so much for connecting and I see you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. Teacher. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.